Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to use the Windows 7 data collector set feature. Data collector sets allow you to capture performance data over a period of time thus enabling you to create what's called a baseline. Baselines should be established when your hardware and operating system are in near new condition but under a typical workload. So we will capture performance data and create a baseline and as you move into the future you always can benchmark your current statistics then against the baseline to help you performance tune and or solve performance problems. So we're going to start by launching the performance snap-in. Uh, to get there I'm going to click on start and I'm going to shortcut and right click on computer left click on manage. I now have computer management open and I've got the performance snap-in as part of that. If I expand performance I've got data collector sets and as I expand data collector sets I've got user defined as a folder. When I right click on user defined I can specify new data collector set and now a wizard pops up to enable me to create my new data collector set so I need to create a baseline so I'm just going to call it the BK-CL1 baseline that's the computer I'm actually using typically you would use a performance monitoring computer to generate a baseline on a different computer the reason you do this is performance monitoring generates overhead that shouldn't factor into the computer you're actually monitoring. So for demonstration reasons, I'm going to monitor this computer. So I've put my name in BK-CL1 and I want to create my data collector set manually and then click next. I need to choose to create data logs or to set up a performance counter alert. An alert is going to let me know if there's a performance event that has occurred outside of a threshold that I designate, which is not what we're doing. We are capturing data over a period of time. So I'm going to create a data log and I would like to use performance counters. So I'll click on next and now I need to add my performance counters. So I'm going to click on add and I want to add two counters from the processor object. I'd like to add percent processor time and I'd also like to add interrupts per second. Whoop, went too far. Interrupts per second. I now want to go to the system object so I'm going to collapse processor and scroll down to system. I'll expand system and I'd like processor queue length as a counter. So I'm going to select the processor queue length and then scroll up and collapse system. I now want server work queues so I'll expand server work queues and I'd like queue length. So I'll highlight queue length and add that. And now I want memory page faults per second and memory pages per second. So I'll expand memory. There's page faults per second and pages per second. I'd also like memory available bytes and memory committed bytes. So there's committed bytes and scroll up a little bit there's available bytes. We also want memory pool non-paged bytes so we'll add that and now we've got some physical disk counters we need so I will collapse memory and expand physical disk and I'm looking for percent disk time so we'll add that and we want the average disk bytes transfer. So I'll add that. Went too far. Current disk queue length. So we'll add that. 
and we want disk bytes per second. So we'll add that. And now we need a logical disk counter, so we'll collapse physical disk and scroll up to the else. There's logical disk, we'll expand that. We want percent free space. And then we can collapse that. And we need some network interface counters. So we'll expand network interface and choose bytes total per second and output queue length. So we'll select that. And then we need the server object. So let's collapse our network interface and scroll down to server object and expand server object and then we'll do bytes total per second and we'll add that. So I've now just added a bunch of counters to my data collector set. This is just a generic set of counters you can use to create a data collector set for a baseline. Do a little research and choose which ones you feel are most relevant. Keeping in mind there's four primary components to a computer and you want to make sure that you have accurate representation of all four components. The components are processor, memory, disk drive, and network. So you want to have a pretty good representation from those four components. So we're going to move on now. I'm going to click OK and it gives me a summary page of which performance counters you would like to log. Now we need to adjust our sample interval. And I'd like my sample interval to be once every 10 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and set the interval to once every 10 seconds. This grabs a read on these counters every 10 seconds. So I'm now going to click on next and I'm going to save my data in the default location which is percent system drive percent which is Windows and then perflogs admin bk-cl1 I'll click on next and I'm going to run it as default which if you're going to do remote monitoring you may need to change the run as however I don't need to so I'm going to go ahead and click on finish I've now just created a data collector set. The next step to do is to schedule this data collector set to run. So if you right click the data collector set and then left click on properties, we have a schedule tab. So I want to add a schedule. So this is going to begin on 1-9-2011, which is today and it's also going to expire on 1-9-2011. In the real world you might want this to run over a period of four weeks and average it together. I also want mine to start at 9.33 p.m. which is right around the corner for me. I'm at 9.29 p.m. right now and I only want it to run on Sunday which is also fictitious in this environment. In the real world, you should start your data collector sets right when a normal load is occurring on the computer or in your server infrastructure. And you should turn it off at the end of the business day and only run your data collector set on actual business days. Because if you have a lot of idle time factoring into your baseline, it will skew the results. So your result set should be actual business usage under a normal load. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I have now set up a performance monitor schedule. However, I need to build a stop condition in. And my stop condition will be an overall duration of 10 minutes which is also not reality. Typically it would be eight to nine hours depending upon how long your business day is. So I need 10 minutes. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I've got a data collector set that's going to start running in two minutes. It will sample data every 10 seconds 
and then it will stop itself in 10 minutes. So I'm going to pause this video for the next 15 minutes, let my data collector set go, and capture this data, and then we'll come back and review it when it's done. So please stand by. All right, our data collector set is done running. So let's minimize the data collector sets and open Windows Explorer and take a look at what we have. So I'm going to expand C and then I'm going to expand perf logs and there's the BK-CL1 data collector set. So if we go ahead and expand that, we have our data collector 01 which was modified at 9.43 p.m. approximately 10 minutes after it started running. So if we double click on data collector 01 we get our performance monitor screen open and you can see here from 9.33 to 9.43 we had some action. Our processor queue length is highlighted and I turn the highlight feature on by control H that turns it on and off. So we have our processor queue length was running and we can see we have an average of 0.475 and we've got server bytes total per second here's percent processor time that has a 0.139 average a maximum 2% utilization and now we have our data collector set one of the things I like to do in the real world as I'm establishing a baseline I like to look for peak utilization and plan for peak utilization to perform well that way I know that under all other circumstances we have adequate performance from the hardware that we're working with. So this concludes my demonstration on how to set up a data collector set and then view the data after the collector set has successfully run. This is BrickHouseLabs.com and thank you for watching.